Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. This is going to be a second video of know-how series, which explains how to achieve a certain task using deep learning or robotic operating system. Today we're going to be talking about synthetic data generation for object detection. Well, first of all, um, let's talk uh, for a moment about object detection and image classification and difference between them. Many people tend to confuse these two computer vision tasks, but in fact, the difference is very obvious. For image classification, we have the whole image and then we classify it into one of the categories. And then for object detection, we detect the objects in the given image. So if you'd like to train an image classification neural network, the task of getting the dataset is pretty easy. Uh, because the dataset for image classification is usually just a bunch of pictures uh, put in the folders according to their class. So you can easily get the pictures from, from Google, for example. Now, for the object detection, since for the object detection we not only need the images, we also need the coordinates of the objects, usually put in the annotations file. So if the object that you want to detect is um, quite common, cats, dogs, airplanes, uh, chances are you can find a public data set uh, which has both the images and the annotations. But what if you wake up one fine morning and suddenly want to train a neural network that would detect uh, platypi, platypuses, you know, these guys. Well, then one choice would be to just crawl for the images on Google or any other search engine of your choice and then manually annotate them, which takes a lot of time. Or you could generate, you could, you could procedurally generate the data set, uh, something called synthetic data. We're going to be talking today about a simpler way to generate synthetic data for object detection today which was described in uh, Cut, Paste, Learn uh, paper, research paper, and uh, despite its simplicity, it works surprisingly well. I'm going to base this video on an article I published recently on Hexter, which is called Synthetic Data Generation for Object Detection, where I used the script from this paper to uh, generate data for Lego detection and then uh, run Lego detection model on K210 chip. But in this video, instead of K210 chip, we're actually going to use Google Edge TPU. Um, Alright, well, let's get started. First of all, we will need the images of the objects and their masks, segmentation masks. Uh, fortunately for us, there is already a data set for that available on Kaggle. It's called uh, Lego Bricks Identification Classification. Um, so we'll just download it. Then we're going to create a folder for our experiments today, which we're going to call Synthetic Data or something like that. Uh, then we'll, we'll place the extracted archive into that folder. And then we will need to use the images of these LEGO bricks to create uh, segmentation masks. And there is a script called, called Helper, which will use OpenCV. Uh, the images here are just images of LEGO bricks on the white background. So we'll, we'll use first four folders of the LEGO bricks images. Then we're going to clone uh, the repository I have called Synthetic Data Generation. We're going to create a Conda environment specifically for this project with Python 3.7. Next, we activate this environment. All the dependencies from requirements file. 
All right, and then we launch the helper pie that helps us to create segmentation masks from the images of Lego bricks. Also, it colors uh, the images of Lego bricks. So they, because the original ones are all gray and we want our model to be, uh, to generalize for bricks of different color. That will take some time, but um, actually going to be quite fast. All right, and next we are going to use these images and segmentation masks to uh, basically place them in random position, random orientation, and randomized scale uh, on the background images using the script from that paper I called Cut, Paste, and Learn. We'll place the images and segmentation masks into Object Deer Lego, which is the name of our object that we want to place on background images. Make sure that it's that the name is in selected TXT. Here's the background images. All right, and then we finally can execute the comment that will create uh, the uh, the images with annotations for us. We can have a look at what, what uh, the generated synthetic images are like. Next, we're going to install Accelerate, a Keras-based framework for AI on the edge. Uh, check out the development branch and then and then install all the dependencies required dependencies from requirements file and run Python setup install to install the accelerate. Next, we'll need to edit the config file. We'll call it Lego Detection. Uh, we'll leave the network type as mobile net uh, alpha. 0.75 uh, we'll change the labels to lego which is the name of the object we want to detect um, then make sure you 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 got the train image folder train annotation folder validation image folder and validation annotation folder correct before we do that before we change the names of these we actually going to copy the generated data set into a separate folder and then we're going to manually choose the images that uh, choose the images that we want to use for validation uh, it is fairly easy to create or modify the script that would automatically choose the validation images for us but I prefer it manually to verify that they are indeed suitable for validation also, it is a really good idea when you work with synthetic data to actually have the real images of real objects for validation. Um, I'm skipping this part here just to simplify the process. But keep in mind that you ideally you want to have at least half of real images in validation and also some percentage of real images in training data set as well. That will help model to generalize better. There is another script called sorter pi, uh, which would help you to copy the annotations. Uh, and now finally, we can change the names of the folders here in the config file. Well, next step is simple, which is simply going to start the train with accelerate train pi and pass to the config file, which is created. The train itself on the GPU will take uh, for 15 epochs, it will take around 10 to 20 minutes which is fairly fast i have 2070 gpu if you don't have gpu uh you might want to use collab and when the training is done it's going to automatically convert the keras model to format suitable for edge tpu inference so we're going to check first um how our model is doing after the training with infer pi well, the results are actually pretty good on validation images. 
I mean, you, you can see that um, there are some... There is there is one Lego, occluded Lego, that, is, that wasn't detected. And there are some false positives, but overall results look pretty good. Now, next, we're going to copy the resulting model from the project folder. Choose the uh, Edge TPU TF Lite model. Place it in Edge TPU Detector Example Scripts folder and run the Detector Video Script. Obviously, with your Edge TPU connected, I have it right here. Um, here is the uh, USB Coral Coral Edge TPU USB stick, and also have your web camera connected to the computer as well. Uh, inside of the labels txt file is just one line lego because that's the only object we got all right actually in the inference on the real lego bricks that i have here on my table it also works surprisingly well remember the model was only trained on synthetic data and had no access whatsoever to real data so it is quite surprising that it performs that well but obviously if you want to increase the accuracy um, then it is better idea to have something about 30 percent of real data in um, training data set and about 70 percent of synthetic data well i hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you next time we're going to use more advanced technique for creating synthetic data we're going to use Unity Engine and NVIDIA's Isaac SDK to generate synthetic data from Unity Engine renderings. Until the next time.